beep, 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 hello, it's me, beep, 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 right, okay, um, you will know from my previous webinars that one of my primary concerns in all this mess, um, after the sterilisation of gay children and transing the gay away, is the danger to STEM, to our crown jewel, and STEM is our crown jewel, we are extraordinary as a country in, uh, our ability in sciences, technology, engineering and maths, um, that's at risk in the West. That's at risk in the West. And I think it's something that's worthwhile us taking seriously because we are now in a situation whereby the nut jobs in the universities and in these particular fields, as they call it, right? Okay, I, I always remember, when I say that word fields, I always remember back to a meeting when, when somebody said to me about STEM, they'd come from English literature. They were doing a degree in Hannibal Lecter or something. I don't know, some wibbling nonsense merchant, right? Said to me, "I'm working in the I'm working in this space." And I said, "Space? What do you mean space?" Well, I'm working in the field. I said, "What field are you talking about? Engineering?" I said, "I'm sorry. What's your degree in? English literature. What was your dissertation? Uh, the works of Thomas Harris." I said, "And you're telling me that you're working where? Well, I'm working in the field of STEM." Well, I said, first off, I said, "STEM is not a field; it's a discipline." And secondly, you don't have it. Next on the agenda. So this is what they're doing. They're infiltrating. You know, like you know, people you don't want at a party. You know, or a smelly person. That's what they do. They infiltrate. Smelly critical social justice warriors. They infiltrate. And this infiltration of STEM is going to have some massive, massive, massive problems for all of us. And I would suggest that if we're not careful we will undermine the very thing that has got us where we are. And it's not just happening in the UK, it's happening in Berkeley. Some of you will remember in America, some of you will remember that I uh, did a short video about the fact that 25% of all funding is now going to, you know, feely feels and mindfulness and EDI cobblers. I hope that you've had a chance to look at that video because what follows from here is, is this is a very natural follow on from that. And it's worth a read if you've got the time. It will take time because it actually is an academic paper um, and therefore will require you to um, engage on a, a more, a, a level, a deeper level than you may normally do so. I would urge you to do so because what they have done is they've highlighted the major areas of consternation that I would have in STEM. Because remember, that's what this does. So, so critical social justice is not a field in its own right. Queer theory, critical race theory, all that crap is just made up nonsense where they reference each other constantly in an academic circle jerk, pretend that they've got expertise in something when they've got expertise in nothing, and then bring all this wibbling cult-like nonsense and place it over the host because it's parasitical. So the host, in this case, being STEM, they place it over the host and then they parasitise the host and they put all of their critical social justice nonsense into every process. Do you understand what I mean? So it's up here, right? They start at the top with the idea of STEM and they begin to, they begin to parasitise that. Then they move into STEM organisations, be that companies, public sector, private sector, and they infect everything with their critical social justice narratives of power and oppression and the unreality of queer theory and gender identity ideology and extreme environmentalism, you know, and fat studies and shite like that. So that's what they do, right? You have to understand that's what they do. So what we've got here, and I'll, I'll, read, you, I'll read you the introduction to it just so you can get an idea and see whether it gives you enough of a, of a sort of um, urge to go and read what is quite an in-depth and very interesting academic article. It's called Why Evolution is True... Um, and it says here, our new paper in Skeptical Inquirer, we like them instantly, Skeptical Inquirer, on the ideological subversion of biology. The free link to a new paper by Luana Moroja and me, not me, him, I can't, or her, I can't find the name, in Skeptical Inquirer has now appeared. You can access it by clicking the screenshot below. It's the cover story and is about 9,300 words long. Right? It's also in the paper magazine where they give the full reference since you can't use the hyperlinks on paper. The opening photo is subtle and I like it a lot. And um, he's got a great picture there of what looks like translucent thingies on oil, oil on water, you know. Very, very clever. The ideological subversion of biology, very clever. Oil and water, very good. 
Our purpose was to demonstrate how progressive ideology is worming its way into organismal and evolutionary biology, impeding research and promoting misconceptions about science to both the public and to scientists themselves. We do this by discussing six areas. The sex, bi the sex, the sex binary, evolutionary psychology, sex differences, individual differences, group differences, and the sacralization of indigenous knowledge. I won't say any more about the piece, but if you read it, I hope you enjoy it. Here's the summary from the beginning of the paper, and this will decide whether or not it's something you want to go forward and read. I do recommend it. I do. Put this out, you know. I'm not going to sit here and read you a 9,600 word essay, but I do recommend that you put aside the time, grab a coffee, take 20 minutes, okay? Biology faces a grave threat from progressive politics that are changing the way our work is done. Delimiting areas of biology that are taboo and will not be funded by the government or published in scientific journals, stipulating what words biologists must avoid in their writing and decreeing how biology is taught to students and communicated to other scientists and the public through the technical and popular press. So what they're saying there is this infection, this uh, parasitization of STEM is directly affecting science communication most important element when it comes to encouraging the public to stand by the kind of trust and the kind of investment we're willing to give to STEM, which is massive. And we know why, because they usually do good. This is going to change that, okay? Okay, so it continues. We wrote this article not to argue that biological sex is taught to students and communicated to other scientists. Sorry, we wrote this article not to argue that biology is dead, but to show how ideology is poisoning it. Poisoning it, yep. The science that has brought us so much progress and understanding from the structure of DNA to the Green Revolution and the design of COVID-19 vaccines is endangered by political dogma, strangling our essential tradition of open research and scientific communication. And because much of what we discuss occurs within academic science, where many scientists are too cowed to speak. Too cowed to speak their minds. The public is largely unfamiliar with these issues. Sadly, by the time they become apparent to everyone, it might be too late. By too late, of course, this, the, the article then continues, by too late, of course, I don't mean that science will be gone or swallowed by your ideology. Rather, I mean that the character and practice of science may have changed permanently and for the worse. They then go on to thank many people. Robbie, uh, a special, special thank you to Robbie Blumner. Um, and uh, Stuart Vise and Julia Lavarnway. Um, oh, and as Steve Jobs would say, I love this. As Steve Jobs would say, there's one more thing. This paper grew out of a Stanford Academic Freedom Conference panel on academic freedom in STEM. Vital. That's why we have a free speech bill now, to keep these lunatics in, in check. This room panel on academic freedom in STEM, which both Luana and I talked at this particular um, uh, conference. If you want to see their presentation, that's also in the document that I put in the Dubris for you. I presented these six topics, the ones that I mentioned previously, but Luana also talked about them in a very different piece she wrote for Barry Weiss's Free Press. We decided to join forces and write a longer and more comprehensive paper. I love this. I love this for a number of reasons, not least of all, because it is showing here the power of collaboration. Two people come together after an initial conference, after an initial discussion on a, in a, at a conference. Both have written papers, you know, resonating closely with regards to what's going on, and then you have collaboration and a longer, more in-depth, well-resourced paper is written. I urge you to go read it. I urge you to go read it. Get yourself a coffee and go and have a read. Make no bones about, bones about it, folks. We can laugh about children identifying cats, but we know it's serious. We can laugh about the fact that men think they're women, but we know this is serious. We can laugh about the fact that everything is racist, but we know it's serious. Dear God, if they get to STEM, if they corrupt STEM, we're all done. We're all, there is no future. We won't be able to meritocratically create. Think about that. Anyway, that'll do for the minute. That's another one somebody sent me. It's great, isn't it? See you later. Bye.